In this part of the lesson, we're going to look at how to record a macro. This can be a really useful way to get some initial help on a technique that you've not encountered before. You don't need to download any files for this session, so let's start by creating a brand new blank workbook. The idea behind recording a macro is that you simply perform some actions in Excel and then allow the VB editor to write out the equivalent VBA instructions for you. To begin recording a macro, you can either head to the Developer tab in the ribbon and click the Record Macro button. Alternatively, you can select the Record Macro tool in the bottom left-hand corner of the Excel window. I'm going to click the Record Macro button. Then I have to fill in a dialog box to determine how I want my macro to be recorded. So I can give the macro a name first. This will be the name the subroutine will have. I don't see any reason to change this from Macro 1 at this point. I can also assign a keyboard shortcut to run it back, but I'm not going to bother doing that at this stage either. Probably the more important choice is where I choose to store the macro. So by default it's set to this workbook, so this means that I'll have a new module inserted into the workbook, and then the code will be written in there. I can also choose to create a brand new workbook, which, as I've already done that, seems a bit pointless. The other interesting choice here is the personal macro workbook. Now, this is a special workbook that's saved as part of your user profile, and once it exists, Excel will always open it up um, whenever you open up Excel. So the idea behind that is that any code you're likely to use on a regular basis, you can store in the personal macro workbook, and that means it will always be available to you. For this first simple example, I'm just going to choose this workbook, then click OK to start recording. Now all we need to do is start performing some actions. So let's begin by writing our name into cell A1 on the worksheet. I'm going to write the name WiseAl, which again, as I've pointed out, isn't my actual name, but hey, we'll go with it for the time being. I can then press enter, and I'd like to enter today's date into cell A2. There's a nice quick convenient keyboard shortcut that allows you to do that in Excel. If you hold down the control key and press the semicolon key, that types in the current date. So again I'm going to press enter at that point. What I'm then going to do is switch back to cell A2, and I'd like to apply a date format to this cell. There are several ways to do that, but here's the approach I'm going to take. I'm going to head to the Home tab in the ribbon and then find the number section in the home tab and click on the little dialog box launcher in the bottom right hand corner of that section. When the dialog box appears, I can head to the custom tab or custom option in the list of categories and then I can write my own custom number format in the type box just here. So if I zoom in there so you can see what I'm about to do, I'm going to create a custom date format that begins with two Ds followed by three Ms followed by a space and then four Ys. So you can see in the sample at the top how this date will appear in the final cell. At that point I'm going to click OK and that will format the date in that cell. Next I'll select the two cells that I've entered values into and I want to apply some basic formatting to both cells. So I'm going to start by going to the fill colour tool on the home tab of the ribbon and I'm going to choose a background colour for the cell. Then I'll head to the font colour tool and this time I'm going to choose a font colour. So let's go for white for this. And as things stand, that's all the things I'd like to do. So at this point I'd like to stop recording. I can do that either again by going back to the developer tab and clicking what used to be the record macro button, which is now the stop recording button, or alternatively what was the record macro tool in the bottom left hand corner is now a stop recording tool. Now that we've stopped recording, we can open up the Visual Basic Editor and see what code's been written for us. So I'm going to open up the Visual Basic Editor, have a look at the Modules folder. This contains just a single module, which I definitely didn't insert myself, this was created by the Macro Recorder. And if I double click on that module to open it, this is the code that's been written for us. It could stand a little bit of tidying up and maybe a little bit of commenting, so it's probably worthwhile spending a bit of time just entering some simple comments just so we can tell what's happening here. So this is just entering some values into some cells. And then let's separate this part out so we can have a look at the formatting section. So let's separate this little section with a new comment. This one's going to say change the date format. And then you'll recognize a few of the other parts of this particular code. You've seen things like selecting cells before already. You've seen the width block, which we've just recently covered in a recent lesson. So we could add some more comments here to say change the fill color, let's say. Change the fill color. And then let's add one more comment that says change the font color. So that makes things a little easier to read and check what each part of the code does. As you look through the code then at this point, it should be possible to see the individual actions that you've performed. So some are very easy to spot, like when we typed in the name in cell A1, or we selected cell A2 and entered a date, applied a date format, and so on and so on.
As well as code that you do recognize, you'll probably encounter keywords that you haven't seen before. So for example, tint and shade, what on earth does that do? You can always find out extra help on these extra keywords using techniques we've seen in a previous lesson. So you could either use the object browser to look up tint and shade, or probably even quicker, click on the keyword tint and shade and press the F1 key. This should fire up the context sensitive help system and take us directly to the correct page on the Microsoft website. So there you can find out a little more information about how the tint and shade property works. When you're happy with that, just return to the code. One thing that might surprise you is just how much code the macro recorder spits out for recording even just very simple actions. So for example, this entire width block here was generated just by changing the background color of cells A1 and A2. You'll find that you can remove an awful lot of this code that's completely unnecessary. The trick is working out which part isn't necessary. Just from experience, I know that I can remove most of this apart from the single statement which changes the color of the cell. So if I take away the pattern color and pattern section and then bring these lines back together again, I don't even really need a width block here. So I can take this line back, remove the width keyword, and that single line now achieves the exact same result as the entire width block did earlier. Likewise, I can modify the width block down here. I don't need to bother with a tint and shade. It hasn't actually done anything. So I'm going to take this back to a single instruction. So selection.font.theme color, and then take away the word width. And that makes the code, makes the final subroutine a lot shorter and neater. You can record almost any action using the macro recorder. The key to this is to experiment. So if you'd like to practice with some extra examples, try recording anything, maybe create a chart or create a pivot table, filter a table, do anything you like and see what code gets created for you. You might not understand all the code immediately, but that's absolutely fine. You can learn more about the features as you use the object browser or the contact sensitive help system. As I say, the key with this sort of thing is to experiment.